Hi everyone, welcome to Clone Compounding, where our mission is to learn from others in order to achieve financial independence. In today's video, we'll be looking at the key lessons from the legendary investor Warren Buffett in his letters to shareholders over the last 40 years. Warren needs no introduction. He's the chairman and CEO of Berkshire Hathaway, one of the largest conglomerates with businesses covering insurance, railroads, food and beverages, and even tech. This video is part of the multi-part video series we're doing on the wisdom from Warren Buffett's letters to the shareholders of Berkshire Hathaway. Today, we'll be covering two key lessons on investing strategy from the legend. Before we start, please smash that like button so others can find this video as well and make sure to subscribe to receive next videos in this series on key lessons from Berkshire shareholder letters. Now let's dive into the two key lessons on investing strategy from Mr. Buffett. Number one, don't invest in a business without understanding its moat. In his 1986 letter to shareholders, Buffett laid out the different aspects he and Munger were looking for in new companies, including simple businesses. He even went so far as to say that if there's lots of technology, we won't understand it. More specifically, Buffett's model states that it's inadvisable to invest in a business where you cannot predict whether the company will have a long-term, 20 plus years or more, competitive advantage. In his 2007 letter, Buffett expands on his thinking about which kinds of businesses he prefers to invest in. A truly great business must have an enduring moat that protects excellent returns on invested capital, he writes. The dynamics of capitalism guarantee that competitors will repeatedly assault any business castle that is earning high returns. When Buffett invests, He's not looking at the innovative potential or the growth potential of the company in a vacuum. He's looking for a competitive advantage. The key to investing is not assessing how much an industry is going to affect society or how much it will grow, he writes, but rather determining the competitive advantage of any given company and, above all, the durability of that advantage. Buffett prefers to keep it simple, as he makes clear in his 1996 letter. Your goal as an investor should simply be to purchase, at a rational price, a part interest in an easily understandable business whose earnings are virtually certain to be materially higher 5, 10 and 20 years from now. A good example is Berkshire's investment in Apple, which only started in 2016 when Apple was around 40 years old as a company and already had many blockbuster products, including the iPhone that was launched in 2007. So, Berkshire waited patiently to first understand the mode of Apple's business before purchasing. It remains Berkshire's largest holding. Number 2. Look for companies that reinvest their earnings into growth. Mr. Buffett is well known for his love of companies that pay dividends and Berkshire Hathaway has profited greatly from companies making payouts to their shareholders. In his 2019 shareholder letter, Buffett reported that Berkshire Hathaway's top 10 stock investments had generated almost $3.8 billion in dividends over the previous year. However, even more than paying dividends, Buffett values the corporate practice of reinvesting profits into growth. Among top 10 Berkshire Hathaway companies, the amount of earnings that are retained and reinvested is more than double the size of the earnings being paid out as dividends. As Buffett notes in his 2019 letter, the value of retained earnings wasn't always accepted among American investors. Today, this idea has become core to how Berkshire Hathaway operates. Buffett writes that, at Berkshire, Charlie and I have long focused on using retained earnings advantageously. His conviction about the power of retained earnings comes from his principles that companies Berkshire invests in must share three properties. Number one, they earn good returns on the net tangible capital required. Number two, they are run by able and honest managers. Number three, they are available at a sensible price. When companies are priced well, run well, and return capital well, it is Buffett's belief that they should be encouraged to reinvest their profits 
not just throw cash to shareholders in the form of dividends. Sometimes that means investing into new factories and growth, but it can also mean buying back stock, which Buffett also likes, as it enlarges Berkshire's share of the company's future earnings. Even if that doesn't work out in the short term, Buffett thinks that over the long term, investing back into the company is generally the right strategy. For now, that's it from us. Hope you enjoyed and learned from these lessons. Subscribe to make sure that you receive the follow-up videos on key lessons from Warren Buffett's Berkshire Letters. Smash that like button and thanks for watching.